So 919 pages and 10 days later, this thing was epic. What's up guys, welcome to my first check-in video for my reading vlog on Robert R. McCammon's Swan Song. Uh, I'm only 80 pages in and I'm doing a, a video pretty early, but I just wanted to get some thoughts and impressions out there on what I think so far. So in 80 pages, I've already met a lot of the main characters which have been richly drawn and it's already been alluded to who the force for evil is and who the force for good is. So uh, we meet uh, young Swan, uh, the, the young girl, in the book who has a knack for uh, growing things which uh, is a power in itself uh, interacts uh, strangely with fireflies and nature in general so uh, it's clearly uh, indicated who the force for good is in the novel and then the unnamed entity or man who I've just been introduced to who's really really frightening as the antagonist who uh, is looking forward to uh, nuclear holocaust and out of those ashes for him to uh, uh, rule the planet basically uh, there are these characters are richly drawn the writing is top-notch that I would expect from uh, McCammon and uh, you instantly uh, like the characters and it's it's very very early uh, yet to see which sides are taken by some of the characters there is a young boy called uh, Roland uh, he's a teenager and already I'm seeing uh, parallels between him and Harold Lauder from the stand uh, Yeah, I think he's going to play a big part in the book. I'm predicting but um, All indications are pointing to a great read and I'm predicting it's going to be very very addictive and I'm going to be looking for every opportunity to uh, delve into those pages so uh, yeah it's uh, caught me it's uh, grabbed my attention and I'm predicting uh, a wild ride with this one so uh, yeah so that's just some initial thoughts and impressions there's going to be a lot more thoughts and impressions that I'm going to uh, be uh, speaking about in future check-ins but uh, until the next check-in catch us later What's up guys, welcome back to another check-in video for my reading vlog for Swan Song by Robert R. McCammon. I'm looking at a little bit over a third of the way through now, which uh, the book is brilliant, it's very well written, and when I uh, first decided to do this reading vlog, I went in giving myself a bit over a, a budget of a bit over a week to actually get the thing read, and with a lot of books I read, I look forward to just finishing them and getting them done. With Swan Song and Robert Armour Cameron's writing in particular, this kind of book, I don't find myself rushing it. I like to take my time and digest it because uh, you find yourself wanting to spend a lot of time in the world he's created and with the characters. So the plot has advanced to such a point now where we're looking at uh, the aftermath of uh, uh, nuclear attacks on the US and now all across the country uh, it's in a state of nuclear winter and uh, how the survivors are adapting to uh, essentially their new nuclear winter world and I'm getting to know the characters a lot better uh, there's three main groups that uh, we're flipping back and forth between the first group is um, uh, uh, Army Colonel uh, Macklin and Roland Croninger uh, he's a teenager who uh, they're dealing with issues at a large uh, shelter or bunker in Idaho the next group is uh, uh, the next pair his sister Crete who's a great character I'm liking her a lot already and Artie Wisco who she uh, who tags along with her along the way and then of course in Kansas we have Joshua the uh, big uh, wrestler who is with uh, Swan and uh, what we're seeing now is the characters actually moving so they're struggling with the ordeal of this um, uh, new world and there's a lot of interesting things happening the shadow soldier who the, the main antagonist is known as he's uh, very similar to uh, Randall Flagg from the stand we're seeing a little bit more of him and how frightening he can be we're seeing something interesting happening with uh, sister creep and uh, an artifact that she finds uh, made out of glass and gemstones and uh, the applications of that 
artifact are really really interesting and uh, the the power it has and what it can do is um, is really interesting it's been alluded to what it can do and I'm looking forward to how that uh, plot line develops as the book goes forward and I'm also looking forward to how these groups of characters eventually meet and uh, you know the writing's great uh, I'm finding myself looking for every opportunity to uh, read as many pages as I can uh, he I, I really like how Robert McCammon describes the world after uh, the uh, after the aftermath of nuclear attacks he paints just enough of a picture for you to give an idea of what the landscapes like and um, he dishes it out slowly he doesn't do massive info dumps on uh, across heaps of pages he dishes it out sparingly and he leaves it up to the reader to uh, form uh, using the reader's imagination uh, to fill in the gaps essentially and it's so richly written and uh, yeah I'm really taken with it and I'm only the third of the way through I'm moving through it quicker than I thought but uh, I'm not rushing it I'm really enjoying it immersing myself and being captivated by Robert McCammon's writing um, he has a unique gift of just um, uh, captivating you with the writing and uh, you feel a part of the world he creates so we're seeing some momentum with the characters they're moving across the country and making their way into an uncertain future and uh, what that future is what eventual confrontation between the protagonists and the main antagonist will be i don't know but uh the main <clears throat> evil entity in this book is very very frightening and i uh, can't wait to see what happens so just a short check in today but i am uh getting through it and uh, I may even finish it by the end of the week I'm not sure but uh, I would like to finish it uh, by Easter and then I can uh, look at putting uh, these videos together and putting up the reading vlog main video hopefully uh, Easter weekend so there you go stay tuned guys I will have a few more check-ins I would imagine but uh, pretty uh, pretty tired tonight after a busy day um, at work and uh, I'll see if I can get some more pages read tonight but uh, I will have another update for you in the next day or two and hopefully with a lot more information and a lot more excitement to share as I uncover a lot more of what happens in this uh, brilliant book so stay tuned thanks guys see ya what's up guys here's another check-in on my reading vlog for Swan Song by Robert R. McCammon I am now just uh, almost halfway through uh, it's been brilliant since I uh, last checked in. We're having some uh, movement from all the main characters. So there are three clear factions or parties. We've got uh, Colonel Macklin and Roland in one group. And we've also got Sister Creep and Artie in another group. And we've got Swan and Joshua in another group and what I'm finding is uh, all these groups are slowly moving to an eventual convergence I think uh, I'm predicting an ultimate showdown between good versus evil of course but um, what we're finding is the parties are picking up uh, more companions so sister creep and Artie have pulled along another person to join their party and their journey uh, Swan and Joshua have uh, also taken on a new companion an older lady uh, who uh, has psychic abilities uh, who will play a major role uh, moving forward I think and with Colonel Macklin and Roland they've actually uh, taken over uh, a settlement uh, near a big salt lake so uh, things are things are moving along at a really good pace and we're seeing uh, a lot more uh, characters introduced for example uh, Swan and Joshua and uh, Liana are now at an abandoned supermarket that is run by uh, uh, psychotic and uh, we're seeing a few more survivors come out of the woodwork and it's just interesting how um, Robert has described how society is broken down and it's interesting that uh, in a disaster uh, that in a disaster like this that, that's happened what happens to people and uh, you know I think if you go through a nuclear disaster and anything that's left over if, if someone has 
food stores or weaponry or something that people want that you can't get anywhere now due to the nuclear holocaust that gives them a position of power and uh, I just think it's the world that Robert McCammon has created is very richly drawn and the writing is uh, of such good quality you just can't help but uh, keep reading and uh, I'm tracking along quite well uh, being almost halfway through I didn't get as much read last night uh, I made the mistake of going to bed a bit early and get some pages read and that's a mistake I can't actually lay in bed and read for hours like I used to I was lucky to uh, you know one chapter took me about an hour to read because I was dozing off and on so uh, it does not work so uh, I might uh, just have to sit up for a little bit later tonight and uh, do a slog through 100 pages or so. Uh, I just can't wait to see what happens towards the end. So seeing a lot more uh, momentum with the plot now, we're uh, seeing a little bit more of the Shadow Soldier. He's got a background sort of role at the moment. Uh, he's influencing Colonel Macklin. Uh, yeah, he's got a very small role. He hasn't. Um, Robert McCammon has dealt out little tidbits of information uh, about the uh, main antagonist of the book. So uh, I'm looking forward to seeing exactly uh, what bigger role he's going to play. And uh, I think Robert McCammon is very clever how he's just saving things for later, and uh, he gives you little hints here and there that. Uh, can, it, it makes it irresistible and uh, just keeps you reading and uh, yeah I think it's uh, he, he's done that very well in terms of a plot device so uh, there we go that's another update I'm really enjoying it and I'm predicting I'll probably finish it by about uh, Easter Saturday I think but as I've said in a previous video a book like this um, can't be rushed I think it needs to be savoured a little bit and uh, I also mentioned previously that a lot of books I find myself just trying to get to the end but uh, if this took me two weeks to read so be it that's how much I en I'm enjoying it but uh, I'm moving along at a fair clip so uh, hopefully by the next update I will be uh, two-thirds through I'm predicting and should have uh, a few more thoughts and impressions for you in that video so uh, thanks again for watching and stay tuned for another check-in catch us later What's up guys, just checking in again for my reading vlog of Robert R. McCammon's Swan Song. Really loving it so far and I'm officially halfway through the book. It is divided into two actual books. So I finished book one of two last night and uh, can't get enough of it. I'm having a great time with it. Uh, I was shocked at a character death where uh, you realize that uh, just as you get comfortable with uh, a key character and get to know them and look forward to what their future is going to be like in the, uh, in the book and how their role will play out, no one's safe. <laughs> so uh, it uh, threw me a little bit and uh, I was thinking to myself well, what's going to happen now the best thing about this book that I like apart from it being superbly written is how the book is laid out so we are f in the in book one we're following three distinct groups of characters and tracking their movements and their um, how they evolve uh, over the time uh, in book one and what I like is that uh, all the characters get a relatively equal number of page time. So what happens is you're not spending five minutes with one, one character and flipping back and forth between all the characters in the matter of a few pages. You're actually getting a generous run of uh, narrative and story about uh, one group of characters at a time before it moves on to the others and I think that's uh, very well, very well balanced and I think Robert R. McCammon has done very well with uh, that component of the book. So we're seeing, uh, we've seen uh, a lot of the uh, main characters go through certain ordeals and dealing with things and confrontations and fighting and uh, uh, battling basically and I really liked how uh, McCammon closed out book one uh, finishing with an internal dialogue from uh, this shadow soldier the main antagonist of the book who is like a, a devil figure to me and uh, it clearly finishes off book one brilliantly because book two uh, appears 
to kick off seven years after the events of book one. So another really good device that um, McCammon has used to design the book. After seven years, that's a pretty long time in a post-apocalyptic world, a lot can happen. And you're immediately asking yourself, well, what are the characters, what have the characters done in seven years? What, uh, you know, where have they been? What have they been doing? How have they been dealing uh, with their place in uh, post-apocalyptic America? And I think uh, that is brilliant because uh, all you want to do is catch up and find out what's happened to all these characters and where they sit now um, and how they've evolved and especially the uh, the bad guys, what they've been doing, uh, did their plans uh, uh, turn out and uh, more importantly what's happened with Swan and Sister Creep. So, uh, I'm at the edge uh, of moving forward with book two and I plan on uh, ploughing through uh, quite a lot of it. We've got the Easter break coming up, uh, four days off work, which is brilliant. And uh, in those four days, I expect to uh, churn through quite a bit of book two. But you know what? I originally had a goal of hopefully finishing it by Easter Sunday. If that doesn't happen, it's not going to worry me. With this book, I wanted to take my time, I wanted to enjoy it, I wanted to digest it properly, not rush it, because I'm spending, um, I like spending time with the characters and uh, like the pace that uh, Robert McCammon writes in. He uh, doesn't spill too much too soon and he dishes out just enough information to keep you enticed to read on. So uh, really, really looking forward to what's going to happen next and uh, you know, if it takes me to early next week, well so be it, I don't care. I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself this month. If it means that uh, I don't quite finish what I had originally in my TBR, so be it, who cares? They'll be there for next month. But uh, at the moment, I'm having a real blast with this book. Um, I'll give you some more thoughts and feedback and impressions as time goes on. I dare say there'll probably be another four or five check-ins at the uh, very least. So a lot more to go through yet and uh, can't wait to get started. So until the next check-in, thanks for watching guys. Catch you later. Hey guys, welcome back to another check-in. I've only got about 353 pages to go of Swan Song. I have to be honest, the second part of the book is dragging just a little bit for me. I mean, we're seeing the uh, the, the characters move a little bit more. We're seeing uh, some situations that they get into and that's all fine. We see uh, a little bit more of a resurgence of Swan's abilities. Uh, and what she's actually capable of, which is interesting. But uh, I feel that uh, the characters are taking a little while to converge to what I'm predicting is going to be an ultimate uh, climax and end battle. But uh, they're just, at this part of the book, there just tends to be a lull. And uh, I think in the next hundred pages or so, things will pick up, I'm sure. But uh, you know, I haven't found myself wanting to spend, um, you know, a good hour just sitting there mowing through it. I'm reading a chapter here and there. I've, I've slowed down a little bit, but uh, hopefully before too long, uh, the, the last few hundred pages will fly by, which I'm hoping they will. So uh, I enjoyed the first book one uh, a lot more than book two. But, uh, you know, things will uh, accelerate, I'm sure, and uh, I'm looking forward to uh, what McCammon does with uh, the climax between the main antagonists and the protagonists. Uh, yeah, it remains to be seen, but I'll keep plugging away. I would predict I would be finished this uh, early next week, as I said in the last check-in. I'm not putting too much pressure on myself. I'd like to just take my time with it and digest it and uh, you know I've got a few more books to read this month and uh, you know I may not get all those read but you know that's fine I've wanted to commit the time for this book and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to seeing uh, what happens uh, towards the end so uh, hopefully by my next check-in I'll be a little bit more excited with uh, some plot developments uh, that I'm predicting will be very good. So uh, stay tuned for that, but just a quick check-in today. And uh, until the next check-in, I'll catch you later. Hey guys, welcome back to another check-in. Apologies for the bedroom hair, I'm still in my pyjamas on this very wet and rainy Easter Monday morning. So I've got 
about 150 pages to go uh, in Swan Song. I'm almost at the finish line, guys. I know in my last check-in that I said it was lagging uh, a little bit, but uh, since my last check-in, I'm pleased to say that uh, things picked up really quickly shortly after. And uh, it's hard not to spoil anything here. I didn't want this vlog to be uh, filled with spoilers. I'm thinking maybe... I might eventually put out a spoiler talk because there's so much to talk about and it is really hard not to spoil anything but I think one of the main major things that's happened was uh, a form of radiation sickness that some of the characters have gone through this isn't really spoiling anything they have a lot of scar tissue that um, uh, crusts over and covers their entire faces and all they can do is look out of a gap uh, with one eye and uh, talk uh, through um, a slit of their mouth that uh, is the only part of their faces that isn't covered in this uh, crusty mass that uh, is a symptom of uh, the radiation uh, from the nuclear holocaust uh, seven years previously. And uh, what we're seeing now is uh, that condition is only temporary. Uh, without spoiling too much more, it transforms people uh, and makes them better than they were before. So in one plot point now we're seeing uh, two warring factions. Uh, the first one is the Army of Excellence led by Colonel Macklin and Roland Croninger and the other uh, called the um, uh, American Allegiance I think it is, is another army that uh, is fighting for control over society and so they're going to war at the moment and meanwhile in the settlement of Mary's Rest the other group of characters are Swan and Joshua and Sister Creep and uh, Paul have merged and met and we finally get a revelation on the glass artifact that uh, Sister has been carrying, the power that actually has over Swan. Uh, they, you know, they come together and Sister gives Swan the glass ring and as soon as she holds it something profound happens and it's a major, major turning point uh, for the story. It was really, really exciting to find out what this glass artifact is actually capable of and we're seeing uh, a little bit more of the main antagonist or bad guy which yeah, doesn't really go by a name he hasn't been named as such uh, he's just the embodiment of evil and he's had a confrontation with um, a couple of the main characters there so things are coming to a head I'm just wondering how uh, the Army of Excellence and Joshua and Swan's party are going to merge and conflict. I don't know how that's going to work out yet. It's still a little bit early, but the last 150 pages, it's going to be um, a final push for me to just get through that. I just want to finish it. I'm anticipating finishing it later on tonight. Uh, and I can give my final thoughts and impressions in my final check-in video but I am enjoying it even though it did lag a little bit a couple of hundred pages back but uh, it was only temporary and maybe it was only me so uh, that's all I've got uh, for the moment I'll give you all my thoughts and uh, impressions once I finish the thing but I'm so close to finishing it and looking forward to finishing it to find out what actually happens there is a mysterious element that needs to be tied up something going on um, on a mountaintop somewhere that involves a black box and a key uh, not quite sure how that's going to work out but uh, we've seen a little bit more of the main antagonist which is really really interesting and uh, can't wait to find out more so until uh, the next check-in guys i'll see you later and i'm done finished i'm exhausted guys i uh I think I mowed through the last hundred and or nearly 200 pages uh, today. Read as much of it uh, as I could when I could. I just couldn't really put it down. I was so eager to find out what happened with the uh, with the characters at the end of the book, and I have to say, uh, it just blew me away. Uh, it was really good, very well done. I think McCammon. Uh, tied up all the loose ends in a neat little bow just perfectly. It was a very, very satisfying ending and I think it was a perfect example of how characters grow and evolve over the course of a book.
uh, you've got uh, main, uh, one of the main characters, Sister Crete, who at the end of the book makes her peace with her uh, very, very secret pain. You have uh, Swan herself, who learns so much more about herself and what she's capable of and how she can handle herself in uh, dangerous situations and uh, confronting ultimate evil. I thought that was brilliantly done. Uh, Josh uh, overcomes past guilt and uh, moves on with his life uh, with uh, a potential new family, which uh, is brilliant. Now, I can't spoil anything here. A couple of uh, character deaths along the way were pretty shocking, but I really like how McCammon really uh, created the essence of good versus evil. Uh, there were very, very clear uh, depictions of good and evil, and how he dealt with uh, the the bad people, bad characters, and the good was very, very well balanced. Uh, it's about uh, you know justice that uh, gets dished out to bad guys, and how the good guys actually win through in the end, but. Uh, I, I just found the whole apocalyptical world really well drawn. I think some key elements at the end uh, were just fantastic. It was um, it was a big revelation, and uh, just find it frustrating. I can't reveal too much more, which is why I'm going to. I think I'm going to do a spoiler chat further down the track once I get my thoughts together and let uh, the whole thing uh, marinate for a little bit before I share that because. Uh, Obviously, it's a little bit restricting, but I don't want to spoil it for people. But the ultimate story of good versus evil uh, and uh, how hope can still survive in a society which is broken down, especially when um, you have a newly created army who the sole purpose is to uh, take by force guns, petrol, vehicles, food, clothing, uh, so that the army can grow. Uh, no matter how big or small the settlements are that are invaded, uh, there's uh, such an element of greed there. And then there's also another army that rises up and challenges uh, the main army and that sort of thing, which uh, I thought was great. Uh, some of the um, the battles were awesomely done. Uh, it, you know, I feel like I've just taken this long journey with these characters. And uh, glad it's over, but um, you know, I it mentally exhausted me, but in a good way. I feel like uh, you know, you follow these people on their uh, journeys, and uh, at the end, everything is just done really, really well and summed up appropriately. And uh, yeah, look, I did mention two thirds of the way in, there was a little bit of a, a lull there. It felt like the characters weren't doing too much. They were sitting around and talking and that sort of thing. But uh, I think how the uh, how Josh, Swan and Sister came together was very, very well done, uh, particularly between uh, Sister and Swan. Uh, a, a, uh, a magic object united them and brought them together. And the artifact in question throughout the book is uh, really original, uh, really well done. And uh, just the the way the characters interacted with each other was great. Uh, how the um, bad guys were dealt with was really, really good. And uh, yeah, I will be talking a lot more about it in a potential spoiler chat uh, in the next week or two. So watch out for that. But uh, guys, don't let the length of this book deter you or intimidate you. Uh, it is thick, all right, and you need to uh, commit a bit of time to it. I don't recommend rushing through. Uh, it needs to be uh, savoured, and you won't mind because the, uh, the characters are so likeable. You just want to spend time with them, and not particularly the, the uh, bad people, but uh, just Robert McCammon's writing style. He doesn't do big info dumps or anything like that. He leaves it up to yourself to figure things out and uh, use your imagination uh, to uh, paint the apocalyptical landscape for yourself. Uh, he does just enough to feed your imagination and I think that's a, a really, uh, really effective talent that uh, McCammon has. So uh, did I like it more than Boy's Life? Uh, no. 
I think Boy's Life is better, but Swan Song was still great and I really enjoyed it and uh, didn't mind spending a little over a week with the characters and uh, it kept me guessing what's going to happen, what's going to happen, right up to the last hundred pages. I had no idea uh, and I thought that was uh, really, really great. So uh, if you haven't read it yet, I highly recommend you do. It's a great ride. Uh, the writing is superb. The idea is very original, although there are some parts of the book that uh, resonate with uh, elements of Stephen King's The Stand as well. But, uh, you know, it's its own book. And uh, the way it was written and how it was structured, more importantly, was uh, really good. I mentioned in a previous check-in that the uh, characters got a relatively equal amount of page time, which is very important. You felt that uh, you weren't stuck with a character for any length of time, wondering what's happening to someone else. Uh, they all get uh, the same amount of uh, time in the story, and uh, I just think that was a, a very well structured way of uh, McCammon doing the book. So uh, there you go, that is the end of the reading vlog. I'm buggered, I'm going to bed soon and uh, let it uh, just marinate in my head and get my thoughts together and write some things down in the coming days so that I can actually uh, do a spoiler chat on the channel. So watch out for that. But uh, thanks for watching the vlog, guys. I hope it uh, makes you want to read the book. Uh, it's been recommended on BookTube exhaustively and I'm just glad I picked it up and uh, looking forward to my next read which uh, I'm not going to decide that tonight. I've got uh, four more books in my TBR and given that uh, what are we, the 18th of uh, April already it's going to be hard to squeeze four books in till um, towards the end of the month so I'll probably pick out uh, two or three possibly of the four left in my TBR but uh, you know I didn't mind making a commitment and spending a bit over a week on Swan Song. It's one I really wanted to read and certainly I did not regret it. So uh, if you get a chance to read it, pick it up, read it, you'll enjoy it. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people do and uh, if uh, yeah, if you end up reading it, let me know and uh, let me know what you think. Uh, as always, please add comments below uh, and I'll respond to those. But um, yeah, guys, until next time, see you later.